Hi class, today we're going to look at chapter nine, lesson two, fighting for independence. And you see in the notes chart, the digital notes chart here, that after reading the lesson, note, write down important details from each section, then create an overarching, like the big main idea of each section it may also include one image. So the section is comparing armies, early battles in the North, an important victory, winter at Valley Forge, contributions from other nations. Okay, so let's go to our text and work on that. Lesson two, fighting for independence. You are there. The soldiers are starving, says the Marquis de Lafayette. They eat nothing but fire cake made of flour and water. As you and the other soldiers listen, your stomachs rumble. Your stomach rumbles. It's been days since you've had anything but fire cake to eat. Since Congress won't send help, General George Washington says, I'll order the, the local farmers to sell us their crops. The air outside is bitterly cold, but you don't care. Let's go, you yell. We're finally going to get food. And here's an image of the Marquis de Lafayette. Okay, so starvation was a real concern. So analyze the illustrations, a British soldier and an American soldier. Okay, first of all, number one, the British were the red coats because they're wearing a red coat. Okay, number two, musket with bayonet. So musket with bayonet, okay. Musket with bayonet. They both have muskets with bayonets. The bayonet is the knife part. So in close um, combat, it takes time to reload these guns. You have to put in the balls and put in the gunpowder and pack it in. If you're in a combat situation, it's almost like having a sword and a gun together. Okay, three, haversack for food. So you see that's kind of like a crossbody little thing there, haversack, tricorn hat. Okay. That's unique to our colonists, simply meaning it's like a triangle. Musket with bayonet. Yeah, we were talking about that. Okay. Cartridge bag and with sling. Where's that? Number six down here. Okay. So again, it's being worn cross body. And I believe this is where they would keep their gun loading essentials, their gunfighter gun powder. <laughs> okay. So they both carried, right? They both carried musket bayonet. They both had some sort of food bag, hopefully. Actually, it's not shown here, but I would assume they had something. Um, they both had a cartridge bag. Okay. Comparing armies. By the way, whose uniform looks better? By the way, that's General Washington's outfit. Most of the people in the Continental Army did not look as nice as this, but the red coats were always well turned out. They looked great. Okay, comparing armies. In July 1775, George Washington arrived in Massachusetts to meet the Continental Army. The soldiers wore no uniforms, only their everyday clothes. Many had no guns, so they carried spears and axes. Some had fought in the French and Indian War. Remember that? Where the, the French and Indians used guerrilla tactics instead of traditional line up and shoot war tactics. Okay. But most had, but most had no military experience. Many were farmers who had just enlisted or signed up for duty in the army. Washington was once so frustrated that he threw his hat on the ground and shouted, Are these the men with which I am to defend America? Keeping the army fed and clothed took huge amounts of supplies. Washington once estimated that his army needed 100,000 barrels of flour and 20 million pounds of meat each year. Congress could not raise enough money to pay for the food needed to feed all the soldiers. 
the Continental Army went to war against one of the most powerful armies in the world. The British Army was made up of professional soldiers with training and experience. The British had 50,000 soldiers in the colonies. Washington usually had no more than 15,000 soldiers in his army at any one time. The British Army also had thousands of mercenaries. Say that word, mercenaries. And a mercenary is someone who will work for hire, hired soldiers. Because many of the mercenaries came from a German region called Hesse Castle, Americans called them Hessians. But the British had problems too. It was difficult to fight a war more than 3,000 miles from home. Loyalists offered some aid, but the British soldiers still had to wait a long time for supplies and soldiers to replace them. Washington led an attack across the Delaware River and into New Jersey, and that's a very famous painting. So as I go back to our notes, we already are getting some information comparing the armies. Okay, so the Continental Army. had many struggles, right? Fewer numbers, not enough food, um, no uniforms. Some didn't have guns, so you could say like not enough weapons. And most importantly, perhaps, they were untrained. They were farmers, okay? Whereas, here, let me go back. Whereas our British army were well-trained well-funded. Remember, Britain has a huge empire bringing in tons of money from around the world, not just the colonies here. Sorry, well-trained, well-funded, okay, professionals. And of course they had superior weapons and uniforms. Okay, so some of the, those are some of the details. So all in all, you could say the main idea was, it's my dog. You could say that the main idea was that the two sides were not equal in ability. Okay. Or skills and that it definitely looked like the British had an advantage here so our colonists our continental army they're the underdog if you watch sports or you can relate to this. We Sometimes we root for the underdog. We want the underdog to win. Okay, they're the ones with fewer soldiers, fewer experience, less supplies. Okay, and an image. So I did a Google search for some images and I noticed there's some slides with information, but I think I like this one or maybe even this one, this picture of battle. So you can choose a picture and then put it into your notes chart right here for image. Okay, the next section is called Early Battles of the North, an important victory, winter at Valley Forge, and contributions from other nations. If we go back to our textbook, Early Battles in the North. Okay, what is the overall main idea? What are the details? What's the overall main idea? an important victory, winter at Valley Forge, 
Um, I'm actually going to go there now. In the fall of 1777, the Continental Army once again faced trouble. While trying to keep the British from taking Philadelphia, the Continental Army lost a battle at nearby Brandywine. In late September, British soldiers captured Philadelphia, where they prepared to spend the winter in comfort. Stunned and exhausted, the weary, tired Continental soldiers retreated to the nearby Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Washington chose this location because he wanted to keep watch on the British in Philadelphia. The Continental Army that set up camp at Valley Forge was a ragged group. Congress did not have the money to send supplies. Most of the soldiers were, wore clothing that they'd brought from home, but it had become torn and burned from the soldiers' battles. Some of the men had walked so far their shoes were falling apart, and notice in this image the snow. It's very cold. One young Connecticut soldier wrote that he had not a scrap of either shoes or stockings to my feet or legs. He and others wrapped their feet in rags. Since food was also running low, Washington allowed his soldiers to buy food from farmers around Valley Forge with continental money from Congress. Also, New York Governor George Clinton sent barrels of salted pork. Think bacon. Additional help came from the 20-year-old Marquis de Lafayette, who traveled all the way from France to join the Continental Army. Lafayette later described himself as having an American heart. Washington liked the young Frenchman and immediately gave him important duties. Lafayette spent his own money to buy warm clothes for the soldiers he commanded. He was so generous that they began calling him the soldier's friend. Life at Valley Forge improved further when Frederick Wilhelm von Steuben arrived. Von Steuben was a German soldier who had decided to help the Americans by training them to become a skilled fighting force. He taught them how to attack and retreat faster and how to use weapons more effectively. By the spring of 1778, Washington's soldiers had become an organized army, unlike being, as they were described here, a ragged group. Okay, so lots of help, and now they are a more effective army. Okay, and then contributions from other nations. While the war waged, while the war raged on in North America, Benjamin Franklin was in France negotiating with the French government. To negotiate is to try to come to an agreement that is acceptable to all the parties involved. Franklin asked, <laughs> excuse me, Franklin asked the French for supplies and soldiers. He argued that France would benefit from helping defeat its old enemy Britain. At first, the French offered little help, thinking that Britain would win that war. The news of the American victory at Saratoga reached France, and the French agreed to support the Americans. Okay, so as you finish up, let's go to our notes section. What were the details? What's the main idea? And find an image. It can be an image from the book or an image you find online. Okay, to go for those few sections. And I would also recommend that you make sure that you can answer these questions. What were some of the important early events of the Revolutionary War? Use the word campaign in a sentence about the Revolutionary War. Who led the Americans' negotiations with France? Okay, and Critical thinking. Why was Valley Forge's relative location important to George Washington? In other words, he needed to keep his eyes on somebody. How close were those two places? Look it up. See how close they were. What were the costs and benefits of joining the Continental Army? What were the pros and the cons? What did you gain and what did you lose? And again, this could be a presentation project idea, writing a speech. Okay, so that's it for this one, and I will see you for lesson three.